and you thought to yourself, he doesn't have any more art books. Not Robotech at the very least. Oh, but I do. Oh, I do. And we're going to look at it. Robotech. The Art of. The Shadow Chronicles. That's right. Let's give it a go. One more time, shall we? All right. Let's go. Boom. All right. We have decided to give it a go. So, we're going. All right. Are the Shadow Chronicles? This was, uh, you know, based off Shadow Chronicles, based off the movie. There was a cartoon animated series a bit going there for a bit. Comic book. Tommy Yoon, forward by Carl Masick. Tommy Yoon was huge in getting this done. What year did they put this out? 2007. You know? We're going to go through it. And so all of these books you will notice do a lot to fill you in on Robotech, to tell you everything they possibly can about Robotech because they themselves demand that you know about it. They're like, hey, you like Robotech? And I'm like, yeah, I like Robotech. And they're like, okay, we're going to tell you about it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to read about it. So let's go. And so these art books, again, they technically do have art in them. All right. But not traditionally what you would think of as an art book, which is interesting to me that they were like, hey, let's do this. And maybe, maybe. You know, the first three, maybe they weren't familiar with what, like, you know, a more traditional art book is. At least from Japan, you know, it's usually all kinds of concept sketches, all kinds of rough character designs, and then iterations of those character designs. You know, they might have not seen that. And so then we get the first three Robotech art books that we look at. This one, much in the same way, now, maybe with a better designer, you know, the guy came in and, you know, he he used some editing software, some magazine software, you know, maybe some Adobe, maybe he uh, used some InDesign, who knows? Um, but they essentially do the same thing, you know, except a lot of these are higher res, you know, maybe they use the you know, the HD remasters of the DVDs, you know? But there's still a lot of screenshots from the show. There's not a lot of design, there's not a lot of sketches, there's not a lot of, you know, what you'd think of as an art book, you know? For better or worse, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm uh, my, uh, my heart tells me that I prefer a more traditional standard Japanese style art book um, but I also like Robotech a lot so it's cool to see it's cool to be reminded you know and uh, I'm not I'm not opposed to that Robotech 3000 ooh, ooh, God be still my heart look at how criminal this would have been god damn I'm telling you, promotional poster for Robotech 3000. Netter Digital. Goddamn. Woo. That's some rough looking stuff. Makes Reboot look delicious. Incredible. Here we go. Talking about Japan and the new start with Tommy Yoon running around pimping some Robotech. To the Japanese, you know how it is. So yeah, again, these art books, lots of words, big readers out there might uh, say to themselves, man, I don't have a problem with words. Well, when it's a goddamn art book, I want art, not words. But that's okay. I read sometimes too, okay? I'll have you know, I've read a novel or three. And all the Robotech novels. Hey, we could do that. We could have a look at all those books. I got stacks of them. All right. Back to this. You know, 
We're getting multiple shots of a planet. Please clap. Please clap. All right, we'll keep going. Um, you know, I jest, but the art is cool. The designs are cool. I'm a big fan. Um, but like I said, like a lot of this design work and stuff like that, you know, is lacking the the je ne sais quoi, the the oh, look at all that crazy design work. I must have you. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for I'm looking for little bits like why did they design that? And I want to see iterations of it. I want to see you know cool things by fun people. You know what I'm saying? See, this is what I want. I want rough looking designs. I want iterations. I want logos. You know? I want to see buildings. I want to see proto cola. Like I want to see pop machines. Don't you? God damn it, man. Hyperspole. Hyperspace fold. Uh, we got the Omicron sector. Like a lot of this is really cool, but again, it's it's really cool. But I want I want the rough stuff. I want the redesigns. I want I want the pencil scratches. I want to know what they were doing. See, detail and lighting design of a hangar passageway. That's cool. Interior design of a test hangar for experimental fighters. You know. That's cool stuff. The characters. Here we go. Let's get hype about characters. Um, this is the stuff I love. This is what I'm talking about. We got all kinds of sketches and designs. Um, they show the Mospita guys as a reference for that. That's kind of cool. And here we go. Here we go. We're getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, like these preliminary sketches. The animation style where they do the colors and the shades where they break out the reds and the yellows. Always a big fan of that. Always a big fan. See, that's what I want to see. Yes, Marcus Rush. Look at these designs. Initial concept art. Very nice. Final key art. That's creepy, but I know why they did it. Yeah, Marlene. Ariel. See, like, the designs for this also were really strong. Like, really clean, really strong designs. Uh, all the complementary colors. You know, like, notice her pants are the same color as her suit. You know, and then you have, like, the green accents and the green accents on her shirt. Green. Green. Guys, take notes. Take notes. Yeah, this stuff was great. Um... And you do see that, like, well, I'll put it this way. Like, you don't typically see Peter Parker running around in comic books wearing, like, a red t-shirt and a blue jacket with blue jeans that sort of kind of looks like his Spider-Man suit. You know what I mean? Like, um, you don't see Clark. He's always, like, you know, in a suit and tie, glasses, secret identity. But, like, a lot of times whenever you have characters who are more casual about what they're doing um i do find a lot as far as like the japanese go they will be like this look is their color palette you know whether it's a fighting game or whether it's like an anime or something like that you know so if they have like say like i don't know terry bogard in fatal fury or king of fighters or you know that guy or smash brothers that he's in now um he will he tends to wear a red jacket with a white t-shirt or a red vest with a white t-shirt and a red hat. Like, do you know what I mean? Like they kind of keep them in the same color so that they're instantly recognizable. And I find like a lot of times with, you know, more Western stuff, um, you know, American, you know, is what I mean by Western, you know, European, whatever. Um, they tend to, be more free, like, you know, a character will be wearing a red dress, but their colors aren't red, as far as if they're a superhero or whatever, or they'll wear whatever, and they kind of dodge around it, like, you, you don't typically see Catwoman in, you know, like, the colors that she would wear, like, the black with the, you know, those kind of details. 
um, you know, they would just put her in like a gold dress or something like that. And, and, and so, um, I feel like the, the Asian mindset and influence is more to keep a recognizable color palette, no matter what the character's doing, whether they're in their, their flight suit or whether they're in casual clothes, they're going to wear complementary colors. Like you'd see her always in grays and purples, you know, maybe with the, like in the, how they have that little splash of red and gold. They would always keep her in that. Like if she was wearing jeans, if she was wearing just a regular jacket out somewhere, uh, you know, she'd probably have like a purple t-shirt on, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you, you don't see that, you don't see that kind of color uh, branding that, you know, um, carrying over across the character, uh, no matter what they're doing. Um, but yeah, we'll keep going here. I do like I do like all these like a lot of these designs are really good, really clean, really distinct. Um, this was also the time too um, where a lot of stuff was getting heavy 3D. All the ships were 3D, all the backgrounds were 3D, um, and for better or worse, you know, uh, it started looking closer to animation. You know, like in the early, in the early, like late nineties, early two thousands, you know, you'd, you'd see a 3d ship and it would, it would be an eyesore It'd just bounce out and you'd be like, that looks disgusting. It doesn't match. It doesn't go. And now a lot of that stuff is, you know, they flat shade everything. They light it differently so that it looks 2d. Um, and there are a lot more techniques for that as well. It's like, uh, and even a lot of the newer, uh, animated stuff is just full 3d anyway you know so they've 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 gotten rid of the idea of even drawing anything um but again here we carry over all those colors see like there's the the android mode that she's in they carry all those colors that like you know all these colors cross over to her hair color and then her suit like see everything carries along the same color palette all the way through you know, and then you see her down here in the dress and it's the same color palette as the robot mode and then her in her like cat suit kind of mode. You know what I mean? Like, and so no matter where she is, you recognize her. You're like, oh, there she is, Janice, M2, let's go. You know, just visually from across the room, you know who that character is just, just through sheer color use. It's very good. It's very good. And people don't think about that stuff. People just don't do. All right. Yeah, look at this. I like all these, all these little cutouts, uh, and pointing out, you know, hey, on this side, like, and this would be for animation, where they'd be like, no, no, on her left side, that's where she has the bang. You know, always on the left. Yeah. Really cool. Really cool. And how they carry all this stuff over as well is really great. Because this this is a direct... Like, and here's what's weird about Robotech. So this Robotech doesn't exist in Japan in the same way that Macross did. This isn't Macross. This is now three generations of Robotech as far as Harmony Gold, Carl Masick, is concerned. And now they have made new stuff based on the the rewritten, reused versions of Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita. So this is a, a sequel to those, but not in Japan. If that make if that makes sense, you know, the Japanese. Um, series were not even related but then when they brought them over here you know they related everything and then this is a continuation to the weird rewrite i guess of the canon <laughs> that is robotech not macross you know convoluted though it may be it is uh, still interesting they asked all the shadow shadow chronicle stuff you know kind of jumps right forward jumps forward from you know, the third generation, the invid invasion angle, I guess would be the best way to, you know, go for it. Picks up there. Um, 
yeah, we got some cool designs here. Um, and as you see, like, you know, they have, they're all 3D models now. They got some, some designs here, but like chances are, uh, most of these things were made, you know, from the sketches and then they just never worried about drawing them again. But yeah, we got a lot of the, the original shots here. Those little heads, those are pretty cool. The Type Z head used by the squadron leaders. Some more cockpit shots. Really, really tight. I assume those are like 3D ones that they probably use for the show, and they just did them out in line art. They do not look like they had a human hand touch upon them. But yeah, we got more of the Invid Overlords. Yeah, the ships were really cool, like all the designs and stuff they carried over. See all this other stuff, all the little props, all the, the guns. The art of the gun, the H90 Gallant. Original design. Yeah, because like that was cool. It was kind of like, um, you know, this was the base and then it would essentially become a rifle. I like that. I like the modular design, you know. Think about think about it. Here's some classic original color design art, and then now the the modern take, the cleaned up take, and they should have the transformation right there. That's really sweet. Big fan, big fan of that. But yeah, the, the super cyclone, the, the giant cannon. Yeah, see, like I don't understand. Like, here's the thing. All right, let's. Let's talk Turkey here for a minute. Why is no, okay, okay. Why is nobody doing anything like this? Right, it's, it's also the same thing like, you know what sucks Star Wars, but I don't see a lot of people making cool comics or video games with lightsabers. You know, like nobody owns the laser sword. Anybody can have a character with a laser sword. You don't see a lot of it. You don't see a lot of cool armor transforming motorcycles. You don't see a lot of, you know, a lot of this stuff that seems to just kind of be languishing. Like these are ideas that are rife for the taking, you know, just go in there and, you know, steal it, make it yours. Give me a cool, give me a cool guy with a transforming bike and a laser sword. It's going to write itself. Like, let's go. But yeah, not the, it, it's one of those things. It's kind of just bizarre to me that you're not seeing a lot of it. Um, it feels like there should be a market for Star Wars, for Robotech, for a lot of the stuff. And you're, it's left up to smaller creators to be influenced by this stuff. Um, which is good, I guess, but like also sad that no one's seeing like money in this like you know and there are a few people out there you know but in general like the people who have the rights for these things are either destroying them or squandering them so but that's just me that's just me i could be wrong maybe i'm missing all the great robotech that's out there you know but we got more ship designs here these are pretty cool now the more aft and forward vi views of the bridge yeah i like that I like these big boxy ships the liberator got more uh interiors um and i do like to see that kind of stuff like um all the markings and uh insignias and stuff like that like all that stuff just kind of fills out things and makes things look more natural more used and lived in Kimikaze class battle cruiser. Yeah, see, and these ones are like the the battle cruiser is a little sharper, a little angular. Yeah. You got you got to have that differentiation so that visually you just look and go, oh, it's a battle cruiser. When you're designing this stuff, you don't just kind of make everything look identical. See, like even here, they were smart enough to be like, okay, here's a 
Here's a battle configuration. Here's a science configuration. And then here's the modular interface. Yeah, see, that's pretty cool. Because that's also the other thing too, like even, even the bikes or the, the Veritech fighters and stuff like that, they were modular, they had armor, they had like the, uh, uh, what episode was it where they went out and had the big satellite on it and they were basically scanning all over the place in, uh, in the first Robotech saga, Macross. So, you know, the Veritech fighters were quite versatile. Archangel class colony fortress. Yeah, see, like, there's what I like to see. Got some blue lines happening there. People sketching stuff out. Yeah, I dig that. I really dig that. But yeah, these books are pretty good, you know, uh, minus the, the third one that was kind of meh. But yeah, you're seeing a lot of really cool stuff. And like, yeah, like these were really neat to me. Like kind of like really simple. These mollusk, the Invid mollusk carriers, it's just like a clamshell design. And they just have thousands upon thousands of troops on both sides. And because you're in space, it's like gravity doesn't matter. And so it just opens and just swarms of enemy fighters just fly out really cool like just a really simple like oh shit design like when you just see the ship come and just open up and just you know enemies pour out of it just just simple like and that's the thing like it's kind of like like i remember when i watched this and i seen that design and i was like it's it's so simple and obvious but then you know you would see other things be like oh we gotta drop things down and everything's gotta open and doors and this and that the other thing and it'd make this big complex thing for some um, like think about like, I guess the best way to describe it is like, think about when you have like an aircraft carrier and the way they get the planes out and they have to take them from below deck and they have pull them up on an elevator. And it's like, just imagine if the top just opened and the planes just sh like were slingshot out or something like something really just simple and easy without having to like, okay, we got to slide the plane over, lift it up get it onto the runway, check, like, you know what I mean? Like to launch a fighter jet in the ocean is like just an ordeal. But this is like a thing in space, just opens, they fly out, away you go. Like just really simple and like intelligent design. Like, because you're not sitting there and going like, okay, like this has to be really complex and a thousand ships are gonna fly out of one little hole, you know, really cool, really cool. The Hignite Cruisers. And that was the other thing, too. They brought in this, like, weird third um, race, the Hignites. You know, all these dudes roll in. And so, and they also, and also the interesting thing about that, there's another cool design cue, is that the Invid are very rounded and fleshy and, like, you know, insect organic style. Um, and then the Hignite stuff is is very like sharp and angular and like kind of, you know, technological looking, um, you know, but, uh, it, that, that kind of stuff's very important for design. I also dig that. Look at all those pipes. Damn girl, look at them pipes. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, as we get to the end here, it's gonna get a little, Flippier. All right, cool. Um, here's the books, the Sentinels. I have all those books. Maybe I'll talk about them someday. We'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll get to the rest of the end here. We're almost at the end. We're going back and doing all the voice actors and talking about the making. And you know, for better or worse, these are these encompass the uh, entirety of the making of these things. So. You know, while I wouldn't mind just, you know, paid cover to cover art, design, sketches, that kind of stuff, these give you a bit more of a fuller experience and, you know, you can read about all the the composers and the music and stuff like that. You know, sound, sound design, remastering in high definition, the whole thing. Oh, we've kind of, we've, we've, we've lost focus here, people. Are we, we going to come back in? 
Are we coming back in? How? See that ship? That ship's in focus. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Or you decide you don't want to be in focus anymore. Is that it? Hold on. You're going to be the video I have to edit? Is that what this is? Incredible. Incredible. All right. Excellent. All right. So, yeah, we're... Uh, we're getting half the picture, we're getting half the sound, they're talking about all this stuff. Remastering in high definition. Got some shots of some of the toys, licensed products. You know, the usual stuff, the legacy of Robotech. You know how it is. Uh, that's probably pretty much it. Yeah, we got the index. You know, we got a glossary of terms. We got the whole kit and caboodle. You know? But yeah, that's going to do it for the art of Robotech, the Shadow Chronicles. Again, if you like everything you've seen here today, or maybe even the other day, maybe the day before yesterday, if you like anything you've seen on this channel, like it, comment on it, subscribe to it, ring that bell for notifications, Tell your brothers about it, your sisters, your mothers, your cousins, your uncles, even the one you don't like. Let them know. But that's going to do it for me. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.